On today's episode, Scaled Composites Vanguard makes its first flight. Is this the new F5? Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. In the 70s, aviation legend Burt Rutan began working with airframe materials to which the aviation industry appeared indifferent, composites. His company, Scaled Composites, built a series of aircraft from personal sports planes to suborbital spacecraft, which exploited the three primary advantages of composite materials. Production with little or no tooling, a very high strength to weight ratio, and the ability to build shapes that would be extraordinarily expensive to machine or form out of metals. Now owned by Northrop Grumman, Rutan's company is in a sense a skunk works, and the latest design to take to the air, Vanguard, continues the tradition of radical design. Converting piloted aircraft into drones is an idea that's over 70 years old, but Vanguard goes in the other direction, building a piloted jet aircraft out of a pilotless concept. Vanguard looks like a tiny stealth fighter plane, and compared to serious hardware like the F-35, this plane is a motor scooter in a highway full of Harleys. It's 41 feet long with a 41-foot wingspan and has a gross takeoff weight of only 10,000 pounds, powered by a Pratt & Whitney jet engine with a modest 3,400 pounds of thrust. Basic specifications are similar to those of the World War II-era Lockheed XP-80 Shooting Star jet fighter, but if ever there was an example of what composite construction and advanced aerodynamics can do, this aircraft is it. Both are single-seat subsonic aircraft, but compared to the 1,300-mile ferry range of the P-80, Vanguard can fly 3,000 nautical miles and carry 2,000 pounds of payload with an internal weapons bay that can take two current production air-to-air -air missiles. Scaled composites handle the aerodynamic and structural analyses, fabrication and aircraft assembly, systems integration, and flight test, while Northrop Grumman developed the removable wing assembly as part of their digital pathfinder effort using state-of-the-art simulation and digital twin techniques. The world, however, is not short of single-seat fighter planes, and the global market for military aircraft is rife with legal and illegal subsidies, high-level politics, and even bribery. The best aircraft simply doesn't always win, but I think Vanguard may be a do-over of a very clever Northrop project from the 1950s, the N-156. The idea then was to go in the opposite direction of the heavier, more complex, and more expensive jet fighters of the Cold War to produce something small, light, and critically cheap. The strategy worked, and the company built more than 2,600 of the aircraft, called the F-5, for over 30 nations. So is Vanguard the new F-5? Possibly, and by the look of the shape, it will have a significantly lower radar cross-section than the other alternative that smaller nations choose, which is second-hand aircraft. With hundreds of fourth-generation fighters like the F-16 now entering the resale market, can you imagine the potential of a new-build aircraft that's cheap to acquire, easy to maintain, and has stealth capability? The low-cost concept worked for Northrop 60 years ago, and it could work again today. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.